In this video, I want to talk about uh, what to do to the 40-foot uh, bridge decks after you finish setting them in place. Uh, this is for the um, uh, S40 by 16s. So this is, um, here you see this model here. This is a pretty typical uh, S40 by 16. Uh, you can see, you know, this is just a 40-foot deck. Let me split them apart here. See that? So they're uh, two 40-foot decks we just, you know, put side by side. Uh, we have our bearing kits here, and we're not going to talk about the bearing kits or how to attach them. We're not, we're not going to talk about the abutments either. In this video, I really want to talk about um, what do you have to do to a S40 by 16 in order to make it usable after you set it in place, okay? Because there's a few other parts and pieces that are needed. Now, um, the, the type of abutments here, we have, um, you know, we have a something cast in place, but that, that doesn't really matter. It's the same application. So um, after you get the bridges set in place, and so it looks up like this. This one, this is pretty plain Jane. Uh, no guardrails, no nothing on this. Just two 40-foot decks side by side. What do you need to do next? Okay, well, let me zoom out. I have these little pieces way down over here. So those I'm going to move back up into screen, 100 feet. Okay, so all you really need is up underneath the bridge, is apply these right here. These are a six by six by half inch angle iron. Okay, um, let me pull some measurements for you real quick. So they're six inches by six inches by half inch thick. Okay, six by six by half. And as far as as far as length goes, uh, you can see the two different decks there. Um, now, try to get them as close as possible. You can see over here, we, we, got, we have them actually touching, but sometimes you can't make them touch, and there's a little bit of a gap there. There's maybe a half-inch gap or something. Um, so that will affect the size of the angle. What you want this angle to do is just be just past or right at the edge of this, this beam here, right? So long as it's at the edge of the beam here, you'll be fine. Um, this particular angle, oh, let's measure it. That one is... Uh, two, well, one foot, 11 and a half inches. So if you cut them two foot long, uh, you should be fine. You can see on this particular case, we have another you know, inch and three eighths uh, overlapping or, or protruding beyond. So it gives us a little bit of wiggle room, inch and three eighths here, inch and three eighths over on that side. So we have a couple inches to play with. So even if we had a little bit of a half inch gap in between the two decks, we would still be okay. All right. So once you, um, once, and you'd want to do this after the bridges are set in place, um, so once once you get these two bridges in place, all you're going to do is take this right here, okay? Uh, let me move it out of the way. And all you're going to do is bring it up over here and just clamp it to the bottom to the bottom flange over here, okay? Clamp it to the bottom flange, and you're going to want to weld all the way across, okay? So um, in this particular case, this flange here is. Uh, just shy of 10, 10 inches. So you have 10 inches here. Um, you'll want to you want to weld this backage over here. So that's another 10 inches. And the same thing over here: 10, 20, 30, 40. You have 40 inches of weld total uh, for that for that one angle. Okay. And you can you can get up underneath here. Hopefully there's no water in the waterway. It makes it much more challenging when there's water. But if there's not, then uh, you just get a ladder and you uh, and you uh, and you just clamp it in place. Uh, and then you want to do that every 10 feet, right? So uh, this deck is 40 foot long, so 10 foot from the end, and then 10 foot from the, end, from the end, and then you have one in the middle as well. Okay, pretty simple to do. And what that's gonna help do is, uh, let me let me get a cutaway section of this real quick. Now we can see what it looks like up underneath the bridge and what those angles are doing. So we're gonna pull that right back to about, all right. There. Okay. Okay. So what we're doing here with those angles, it's going to help these two um, beams. You have you have these two 24-inch tall beams. It's going to help them deflect at the same rate. So that way, if a vehicle is on this tire, uh, if a vehicle tire is over this beam. We want these two beams to deflect or bend at the same rate, right? So you have a heavy vehicle crossing over here. Let's say it's really far off to one side, so you have one tire over here and one tire right over here. Well, uh, we want these two beams to bend at the same rate. So if a tire is just on this beam, it's it's, it's going to force this beam 
uh, it's going to carry some of that weight over this beam as well. So these two beams will deflect at the same rate. Okay. Now, while I have this this uh, cross section cut open here, you can see that uh, this deck has um, these decks have uh, two by wood boards across them. Okay. Now these can be a real chore to replace. So another thing you have to do after you get these angles these angles set in place, the next thing you have to do is cover the bridge up with a secondary layer of wood. Let me go ahead and um, and undo that. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, let me pull over the next model I have over here. I already have the deck made. Let me just pull it down 100 feet. Okay. So all you're going to do is apply a, another wood deck on top of the existing wood. Okay. So let me kind of pull it up a little bit so you can see. Um, and uh, you will have to, for the most part, everything is getting applied wood to wood. But this last one, you may have to drill into some steel. Okay. Uh, oh man, I lost that. Let me bring that back down. 100 feet. All right. Oh, come on. All right. So the type of wood we typically recommend is a three by 12 by, uh, this happens to be 16 foot. So let me, let me just take a measuring tape to this, um, two and a half inch. So three inch nominal, two inch actual, and then 12 inches, uh, right about one foot, right? Um, so that's all you have to do. And you'll get a deck that looks like that. And it looks like one nice big long bridge. Um, now, if you wanted to, um, some people are going to be using this bridge initially for construction traffic, and um, they don't want to ruin this wood um, with all the heavy construction traffic. So what are your options? Well, let's go ahead and get rid of this. I'm going to move this back up. Uh, let's move it back up 100 feet, get out of the way. Okay, so let's say you wanted just to use a temporary deck just for your construction traffic, okay? So a typical vehicle is going to be about six foot wide, okay? So let's measuring from, from here, six foot wide. So that's going to be 36 inches and 36 inches. Okay, so that's where most vehicles are going to travel. So the center of this, so most vehicles are going to go down. One set of tires will run here. Other set of tires will run here, all right? So what you can do is just add some, what we call them lane runners, right? So... I'm just going to add something here. We're going to go up. Um, we'll make that actual three inches. Let's turn that off. Sorry. All right. So three inches. And we're going to go over this way, 12 inches. We're going to go down. And we're going to go back over this way. Okay. And so then we're going to make this 40 foot long. Okay. So that's obviously you won't be able to buy 40 foot long deck boards. Um, let me color this. Colors. Wood. We'll just use this wood here. You know what? Kind of makes it look like the old wood there. Um, okay, you want to use pressure treated Douglas fir, preferably. Okay, I guess I should go ahead and call this uh, three by wood deck board. Okay, so you won't you won't just want to do one. You'll want to do three. Okay, three going lengthwise. Okay, just like that, okay? And then you'll want the center of this group to be right at the uh, the three foot mark, three foot from center, okay? Then we're gonna take the same group, and we're just gonna move them over here, okay? So now, look at that, we have a nice driving lane for all the vehicles to use, okay? So you can see where the six foot mark is at, uh, and uh, if you think that some of your contractors are going to need a little bit more room, uh, then, then the, this is three foot, which should be plenty of room. But if you're concerned or if they start driving over the edge a little bit too much, you can always just add another board, you know, just add another board from this way and then add another board way over here, right? And this is pretty simple to do because you can just screw wood to wood, right? Um, it's not so important that, uh, that you screw this last little piece down, especially for a temporary um, uh, deck, but um, yeah, that that makes it pretty simple to do. Uh, you just screw them down. Uh, you'll want to use what use like a three-eighth inch or equivalent lag screw.
3 8 inch uh, diameter or equivalent lag screw. Uh, the reason why I say equivalent because there are some other products like Fast and Master sells a fan fantastic product that's equivalent to a 3 8 inch lag and it's much faster to use. Just keep in mind whenever you're doing this is um, uh, don't don't get boards don't get screws that are too long. Let me go back to that cross section uh, again. All right, let me jump back over here. Okay, so if you use a screw that's too long, you run the risk of going through that board, through this board, and then hitting one of these cross members. Okay, so you want to whenever you get your deck. Um, Measure measure how thick this board is. Measure how thick your new board is going to be, uh, and get. Ideally, you want that screw to be in the middle, between the middle and the bottom of that of that board. Okay, um, uh, but yeah, you don't want to hit that that board down over there. Okay, that's really all there is to it. Let me show you one more thing while uh, while you're here. What does um what does this look like underneath with uh, one of our guardrails? Let me, let me pull that open real quick. So you can see some of the other stuff that um, you can do later if you wanted to. Let me go to, uh, I'm going to just grab one of our guardrails here. Uh, this is our GV10 guardrail. All right. So most people, when, when they look at this, they think, well, this is pretty simple to build, which is really not that hard, right? You got some um, W6 uh, posts over here. These are, they look like, um, well, those look like W6 by 15s. Um, I don't think they look like 16s. So let's see. So, well, it doesn't matter. And then we have our tubes over here, right? So, but what people don't see is all the work that needs to be done up underneath. And that's these kickers, these red pieces here, right? So that way, when a vehicle hits this guardrail, the energy can transfer from this back down to this beam. But we don't want this beam alone to be bearing all the, 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 the force of that vehicle impact. We want to transfer that weight from this post to this beam. We want to share that, that force with the other beam, and that's what this kicker does. It transfers the weight from the vehicle to the to the horizontal member to the post, shares uh, some of that impact with with this beam, then it transfers that back over to the other beam, right? And then because these angles, it just so all that energy gets transferred all the way, um, and sure gets shared by this by this uh, beam and this beam and this beam and even out to that beam. Okay, so that's a lot of um, a lot of strength there for when a vehicle hits that post. So our goal is to have uh, that vehicle stop without uh, damaging a whole bunch of stuff, except for the vehicle, obviously. It's going to make a dent. So that's what it looks like. Um, one thing that some people do build is uh, they'll actually take these boards here, right? Because these boards are really nice. These are called lane runners. Um, what's nice about these is that... As time goes on, I just lifted those up two and a half inches, right? As time goes on, the um, let me pull. I'm gonna pull that this deck back down. If I can grab that deck. 100 feet. Okay. So we have here in this model, we have a nice new deck underneath, right? Um, the secondary layer. Then we have uh, we have a, this third layer up on top. Well, why would we want three layers of wood? Right? Well, think about um, think about this. Whenever you have a vehicle drive over this bridge, right, um, all the wear is going to be in this area of traffic right here. If you look at any wooden bridge, your wear is where your tires are at, right. So here in this area here and this area right over here, that's what gets wore out. The wood over here is perfectly fine. The wood in the middle and the wood on the edge over here is perfectly fine. It's just where the tires go that wears out. So what some people do is even if they add a, a, a full new deck over over on this side, you know, the whole deck has, has been you know, applied, they'll still want to put lane runners down on top of that. That way, every 15 years or so, all they have to do is replace this third layer and not this layer here. So these are the ones that get worn down and really... Even at that point, um, typically what's going to wear down the most on, on these boards here is at the very end. So this area here, here, uh, over here, and over here is going to get worn down. Okay. Um, let me see that again. So on, on this type of a bridge, the area of wood that gets worn down the most is here, here, 
here and here okay uh, that's get, that's that sees the most amount of wear and that's going to be um, what affects that the most is what kind of approach you have right so um, when you have your your road coming up do this if you have a bump or a dip or any kind of a that, that makes your car jump uh, or bounce on top of the bridge it's going to wear out that wood so try to get a nice smooth approach so vehicles or even if you have a like a sharp um, uh, road coming up so the vehicle kind of when if it's going fast will come up over here and bounce on the bridge the front tires will bounce that's going to wear out the wood so try to get a nice flat smooth surface don't allow uh, some people will allow like a little divot or I guess the dirt gets compacted here and then they don't do anything about it well that when the vehicle tra travels over that it's going to bounce on the bridge and that creates a lot more weight and wear on the deck right over here okay um, so after 10 15 years this is the piece of wood that's going to be uh, need to be needing to be replaced uh, if you use these lane runners it's going to be pretty simple so uh, just to replace the section here so what I would recommend is is just that these first this is 40 foot long right get eight foot long boards for this first section of over here okay um, then uh, so this is this is the only area you'll have to replace these little eight foot long boards um, makes it makes maintenance a lot easier okay now um, and you want to do that on, on both sides right so make sure whenever you're designing your roadway your roadway is going to affect uh, how your how the deck is going to be um, uh, how, how the wearing is going to be affected on that wood okay I think the last thing I would mention is curling uh, when wood wants to curl okay um, usually wood a curl if you don't um, actually I'm gonna get that I'm gonna get that cross section opened up again all right so um, wood will want to curl if it's not supported so you see in this particular case here there is from here to here is a little over one foot okay um, so what you might get if you get a lot of uh, moisture um, this board here may want to start curling up okay so make sure that whenever you're uh, placing the boards down you're putting uh, you, you know how to place the, the boards usually all, all wood has has green on the outside you want the you want it cupped um, like a C with it with the with with the rings kind of facing this way okay that'll that'll try to reduce some of the cupping or, or the warping okay uh, so that but that wood regardless uh, that wood's going to want to just curl up a little bit uh, if that really bothers you or if you're going to have a lot of pedestrians on the bridge then you probably do want to go ahead and and secure uh, put a couple of screws on every single board uh, through this metal deck here or the metal i-beam that's a should be about half inch what is that that's yeah right at half inch um, so it's, um, it's a fair amount of work to drill half-inch holes or drill screws through half-inch steel. Uh, but if you need to, you need to, and that, that'll keep the, the, the bending or the warping of that wood. Okay. Now in the middle, it's not so important because uh, you, know, you have the wood screwed here and the root screw, wood secured over here. So it's not going to want to do anything here. That's all there is to uh, to this project. So uh, obviously on this job, um, uh, I'm just kind of shooting from the hip. Didn't give you uh, um, all the details that, that maybe needed, like the spacing of the guardrail of the bolts and stuff, the lag screws. So um, this may or may not work for your particular job. So I would encourage you to either use our engineering or hire your own own engineer to verify. Uh, we're not responsible for um, any work done that we don't engineer. That's all. I appreciate it. Thanks. Bye-bye.